Hello again, I'm Matthew from thewetpen.com, and I recently got another new pen in the mail from India. As you can see from the top of the box, this one is from Del Moon Pens. And before I get to the pen, I want to mention that it arrived with some wonderful little notebooks, each one with an important site from the city of Delhi on the cover. We have the Lotus Temple, India Gate, the Red Fort, and Qutub Minar. I don't know what kind of paper is inside of them, but it's wonderfully fountain pen friendly. And although they're not exactly the same size as a passport-sized traveler's notebook, they're close enough to be usable. Now, let me show you what's inside this box. This pen is the Del Moon VIP model in Eggshell Raiden. I wouldn't say that I've ever been a huge fan of these types of eggshell and crested pens, but they have definitely always intrigued me. It's such a unique and interesting look that you get from that natural enamel material. And this one had a reasonable enough price that I decided to give it a shot. The Del Moon VIP model is available in lots of different finishes, including some really nice acrylics and also abalone Raiden. But they all have this same shape, a somewhat bulbous cap and a pen body that also bulges out in the center. To me, this shape seems like the perfect one to have covered in eggshell, since these round shapes are reminiscent of eggs, I think. Anyway, each of these tiny pieces of broken eggshell is inlaid into a black lacquer, and when that's complete, the entire thing is given a clear coat to make it nice and smooth, and also to protect it. The result is a pen that feels very solid in the hand. This pen weighs 53 grams, about twice the weight of a Jinhao X159. The pen has a nice sturdy clip with some spring to it, and it says Del Moon on the flat surface. The cap twists off in just over a half turn, which is nice and quick, and the threads are fine enough that it's getting purchase on at least two threads, but I'd feel better about the long-term durability if it took a full turn to get the cap on and off. With the cap off, you can see the black plastic grip section that also bulges out a little bit before it tapers down to the nib. In the hand, you don't really feel that convex shape, and visually, it really matches the rhythm of the rest of the pen. That's a nice touch, I think. And look at that nib. This one is not hand engraved, it's machine etched somehow. I can't tell if it's CNC work or laser etched, but it's an awesome design. It looks like the alignment wasn't 100% perfect. It extends just beyond the decoration border here near the tip, but it's not something that you'd notice unless it's magnified like this. Anyway, the nib is not as nice as a hand engraved nib like the one that I showed you last week, but it is still one of my favorites. The nib itself is a Yovo broad with the typical Yovo feed. And the pen uses a standard international cartridge converter, and of course it'll also take cartridges. And as is the case with most Yovo nibs, you can unscrew the whole nib unit and replace it with just about any other Yovo nib unit. I have several oversized pens, and I love all of them, but this one might be the most comfortable in my hand. With the weight of the pen in that center bulge, it's really well balanced and it just fits really nicely in my hand. The combination of the weight and the size is just right for me. I inked the pen up with some of this Kuratake ink. I'm a big fan of it these days. It's a lubricated ink, but this nib feels as perfectly smooth as anything in my collection. I don't know if it's luck of the draw, or if it was given some extra attention before it was sent out to me, but this one is absolutely first rate. I tried it on a few different papers, Regalia first, then Irafol, then some Cosmo Air Snow, and it performed perfectly on all of them. 
Although I do consider this a large pen, it's not really all that long. It's about six and an eighth inches or 155 millimeters. For comparison, here it is next to a Lamy Safari. Actually, that's a counterfeit Safari, but it's the right size at least. Here it is with a Twisby Eco and a Runga Abimanyu Grand, which is the big version of that pen and the widths are more similar. And finally, here's a Runga Giant 9B and a Jinhao X159. I mentioned that this pen was not too expensive, but of course, I meant that relative to other eggshell pens. Japanese and European pens of this type can cost thousands of dollars, and even the beautiful pens from Mr. Cypress in Taiwan generally cost at least four to six hundred dollars. But this one was about 160. Not bad, considering the amount of work that is put into a pen like this. Of course, not all eggshell Raiden pens are created equal. Some of the more expensive models out there, including some of the ones from Del Moon, have more complex or just tighter patterns of shell. But for this price, I'm really impressed and happy with this pen. Well, just yesterday, I got a new pen in the mail from Korea, and I think it'll be the subject of my next video. Although I also have a shelf full of new inks and other pens to show you, so we'll see. In the meantime, if you're not already subscribed to my channel and you like this sort of thing, this is a good time to do it. And that's it. Stay safe out there, everyone. Enjoy your fountain pens and ink, and don't forget to actually use them.